Okay, hello everybody. I saw this video and I've not yet watched this one with Paul Messler, but I was quite interested to, you know, see what he's got to say about what temp wild campers really want. So we're going to hit play. I'm out on another little adventure today. Believe it or not, I've got a new tent to test out. What a day. Absolutely stunning. As you can probably tell, it's a little bit breezy. So it'll be a really good test for the tent. So I was really impressed when I first saw this tent set up in the showroom. It's got some great features on it that I know that a lot of wild campers, including myself, have been asking for. But I still think it could be made even better. So we'll find somewhere to pitch up and then me and you will take a look around and then we'll come up with a wish list of all the things that we want to make the perfect one-man tent. And then hopefully some of the manufacturers will take notice and give us what we want. Okay, well, the first thing to say is, <laughs> I hope Paul don't mind I'm doing this, but this is fair use. Um, and I've, I've seen other people do videos on, on this type of thing, where like a reaction video where you watch something and you follow it on. So just curious to give it a try. <clears throat> so I don't know if it's because of the amount of rain that we've had, but the Peak District is looking absolutely lush at the minute. It certainly does look very, very nice up there. There's some very, very beautiful heather for sure. I've come down there before, but it's like yeah, a little camp, rabbit warren or something now. I think that's Andy Beavers, so check out Andy Beavers' channel as well as Paul Messner's channel. Gorgeous, isn't it? I must when I watch scenery like this, it just <laughs> it makes me want to get back out there again. And funnily enough, I'm going to be in Wales tomorrow, so not too long. And I will indeed, you know, get back out there pretty soon. There's really some very, very beautiful heather around there at the moment. I noticed that Paul, when he goes up to the Peak District, he finds some really, really so this interesting... this is one of my go-to spots. Interesting to places gear. to camp at. It's only four or five mile walk in, but it's far enough out of the way to normally get a bit of peace. Got quite a few different bits of kit to show you today. Had some of it quite a while, just not shown it you before. This pack, about eight months, four class, I don't even know what it is to be honest, MT900 Ultralight, 50 plus 10, it's got some good features. That's the tent, excited to try that out. All right, so this is the Terranova Laser Compact all season, get it pitched up. And then we'll have a look around. So there's a single pole tunnel tent with two poles at either end, give you that bit of extra room. So this is a nine millimeter Terra Nova reflex pole. If you want to go to the extreme, you can double pole this for extra strength. Yeah, 
it's so beautiful weather at the moment. I don't know when he did. So either end, there's a little pole. Fits in this sleeve. There we go. Is there a vent? One on this end as well. Yeah, it looks like because you can see, yeah, there is a vent there. Yeah, quite a decent vent, actually. And there's plenty of Dyneema guy lines. And these ones on the end <coughs> give you the belts and braces. So the first thing we want as wild campers is for our tents to be robust. That's not going anywhere. And if you double pole this, it'll take a proper hammering. But that's not what's impressed me the most. Wait till you see inside. I mean, it's tense, Gary. It looks half decent. Are you? I noticed that Paul sleeps on the opposite side to me, so my head would be over on the Just right. Just look how much side. room you get inside here. This is a true one man tent. You now, most one man tents, you can barely squeeze your, your sleeping pad in. This, you can get a wide pad in, all of your gear in. A uh, push. I think you can squeeze two people in here. Yeah, it does look pretty roomy. In a minute, it? I'll get Andy to come and sit inside and have a lie down so you can see <laughs> just how much room there is. I know a lot of you taller campers out there really struggle <laughs> to, to find a tent with plenty of room in it. Something like this just might be the answer. Yeah, just see what it's like for size for a one-person tent. You're taller than me. Decent headroom. Just lay down. Tons of room, isn't there? Yeah. How tall are you? I'm six foot one. I've got there six or eight inch and then. Yeah, there's probably five or six inches there, and there's more at that end. And twelve inches here for foot and shore. A bit less than a well, it's probably about eight inch there as well, but there's plenty of room. And then look how much you've got at the side here. And that's inside the tent. So granted, this isn't the widest of vestibules, but there's still enough room to cook yeah, and to get your pretty decent. It's vestibule. long. So you could get your bag right down at that end or this end and then get your stove on here. I'm going to be cooking steak and asparagus in there in a bit. It's a one man tent, but it's got a slash to. So you can, one of them, one and a half. it's like a one and a half, <laughs> but, you know, people want a true one-man tent, don't they? Yeah. And it's pack where trail weight, as they call it, is under one and a half kilo. It's what I was saying in one of my videos the other day about, you know, buying kit, a kit for the first time and that type of thing. You really do want to be, uh, as tent goes, this looks pretty decent, to be fair. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to be trying to get a tent where you've got plenty of room because it's all very well pitching a beautiful sunshine like that for your first ever camp and that type of thing. But, you know, if the weather really, really turns and then you've got to pack up, well, then you need to be able to try and pack every single thing inside the shelter. I mean, that does look a good, a good size vestibule, uh, and also it's it doesn't go directly to like it's not a triangle is it it's it, it's not a rectangle but it's it's not a triangle either so there's a there's space at the back so you could put two pairs of you could put two pairs of boots back there as well that actually looks yeah, for a tent i must admit it's half decent actually i don't know what the weight is or anything like that but i, I must admit it doesn't look too bad i stick from a trail star the mod trail star um more room you could picture where where you couldn't pitch a tent, but 
Yeah, it's not a bad tent. Let's keep watching. Hello. I think it's one seven somewhere with all the pegs and stuff. I don't use the standard pegs with it. I'm going with Eastern pegs again. Um, they use. Okay, I think here. Let me just go back. Uh, trail weight, as they call it, is under one and a half kilo. I think it's one seven somewhere with all the pegs and stuff. Okay, so about one and a half kilograms. It's it's quite uh, it's quite heavy. I mean, one and a half kilograms. That's it's quite heavy. The Hilliburg Anan is lighter than that. Probably not quite as big, but it's it's, it's lighter. Um, and I would prefer that, to be fair. The Scap One is probably similar weight, 50-50 really. Trail Star, 500 grams, <laughs> five, five, 600 grams for the Trail Star or something like that, plus the inner as well. So, you know, you're probably 800 grams or something like that, but it's still half the weight of that and a significant amount more space to move maybe not yeah, probably probably similar headroom and everything but yeah i don't use the standard pegs with it i'm going with eastern pegs again um they use their own terra terra nova terra firma i think yeah i i always tend to switch out pegs as well so i would suggest that you put in some good strong eastern pegs the nine inch or the eight inch um, msr groundhogs and a a mixture of a few smaller ones in case the ground is stony and rocky. I've got a video on pegs as well if anyone's interested. The called? Yeah, Y shape kind of things, a bit like MSR ground dogs. Palace for one person, that. <coughs> New pillar. Bit of luxury. So we're going to have a dabble with the out kit. Whisper pad today. I've enjoyed using this so far. Loads of room on it. It's comfortable. It's a bit bulky, but comfortable and warm. I bought my little flex tail pump stroke lantern. I'm going to show you how quick it is to inflate using the bag that comes with the sleeping pad. I hope you're going to do both. That'd be interesting to do both. Have a race. I it and see. I must admit, when I... For several days, I just use my brain. I'll spare you the details and tell you how many bagfuls. That's 12 bagfuls. And that's up enough for me to be comfortable on. Right, so a wide pad, and then you've still got that much space at the side. My muscular forearm's worth of space. <laughs> I'll shove the pad up to the top, and then we've got probably a muscular forearm to the bottom again. So sticking with the out kit theme, I've got the Pipe Dream 400 sleeping bag. And that is going to be home for the night. So I seem to have caught my jacket on something. Needs to do a little repair. So this is tenacious tape. Got my little next tool, is it? Nexi tool. It's a great bit of kit. It's got um, scissors, pliers, knife, all that kind of stuff. I'm not 100% sure if this will work on me down jacket. But better than nothing. I cut a little square out. Going to make sure that the corners are rounded off. We don't want a huge patch on my jacket. Keep that. Take it down with me. Yep, leave no trace. Very good. Not perfect, but it'll stop all the down coming out of there. Is what it is. Yeah, these things happen. It's a 
It's a pain when that happens. There you go. It does happen. Backpack fits down there, okay? Put some space down here <laughs> for me, rubbish. Yeah, it's nice and cozy. It's there, not the sunset yet, but it's just hiding behind that cloud. I like the little tart and but that trig mat. that you might be able to see at the top there. That's back to it's actually an ethyl. I hadn't planned on bagging any today, but in fact, I'll go up and get it in the morning. Tonight, I'm just going to chill out and have a beer and some steak. Cheers. See, it's the little things that make tents better. You now you get these saggy things for your doors. You can adjust this one up. <coughs> so you can make sure it's really tight. Yeah, very good. Much better. I was going to cook inside Major the tent. Designs but do that, of course, too. May as well use the kitchen facilities. God, could that steak get me hungry? Oh, uh, why well, I should start? Right, I so start doing some bit um, of Tesco fine. Yeah, I start to, <laughs> when it gets a bit cooler. <laughs> get the old steak out again. Get some more more cooking going. Missed fillet steak. Asparagus, some shrooms. Yeah, I don't like shrooms, mushrooms. No, I can't eat those. I can't be eating those. He's, he's, he's good with his cooking, though. He, he comes up with some uh, interesting things. Made your fingers there. <sighs> No, I got some steak seasoning in the end. I just season everything with this these days. Even me veggies. That is definitely up there with a pot noodle. <laughs> a bit better than a pot noodle there, Paul. <laughs> right, that's about done. Oh, it's getting dark. Doesn't that get dark quickly? It's like dark at like... Let me play. Like eight o'clock now, it's dark. God. I'm going to let the steak rest in the pan. They are amazing. It's nice to push the boat out every now and again. No potatoes. Right. I don't want to <laughs> cut my pan, so I'm putting my spatula underneath. So I'm cutting onto the spatula, not the pan. Look at that. It's a little tiny bit rare in the middle. Oh, yeah. God, it does look tender. Look at that. Yeah, it does look good, that, Paul. <laughs> like Gordon Ramsay, but without the swearing. <laughs> Poor hair. I'll bring you back one about this. I'm wishing I'd brought some bread and butter. Knock that up. Andy's cozy little setup. MLD cricket. It's got the inner fitted to it as well. Uh, which inner is that, Andy? Uh, blonde fire pot, curry gum Very nice. Uh, fire pot. What's a fire pot like? I've got to try one of those sometimes. Anybody asks, you can't get storming Norman cans anymore unless you find one on eBay. Are you going to be using this in the winter? I don't know, I might do. I said I was going to get a, a go last year and I never did. I just, I just sort of never got around to it. But 
Det känns som att man bygger sig till det. Ja, det är... Kör en stort tätt paff. Okej. Det där ser ut som en aliens head där i de här rocks. It's good to see. I'm not the only one that does extra long, extra long videos. Although you said I managed to get it all in one video, I have to break mine down into two videos. They're too bloody long, otherwise. I can't get on with those cups. I'm going to take a cup like that on this next trip. But I just don't find them very comfortable to drink from. So another cool feature of this tent. It's got a full solid in it. You can open things out. There's toggles on here to roll it up if you want to. I'm not going to bother. There's big vents at both ends as well. And in hindsight, I thought the vestibule was a little on the small side, but there's actually plenty of room in there. Yeah, to be fair, that's a decent size. More than in a lot of tents that I've got. Yeah, it's a decent size vestibule. Get more minimo base. It's a cracking little table for me mug. I've been really struggling to get a comfy pillow, so I'm trying the Sierra Designs one. I can't remember what it's called now. I just use the I'm Sea to down. Summit one. It's super light. But Not that does quite. Look quite cozy. Stick as I want, so you can stick something else in there. So I'm going to inflate my other. Um, pillow in there and see if it buffs it up a bit. What I tend to do is put something under the mat where your head is, and that raises the mat up a bit. Here we go. Best of and both worlds. Raise the mat up. Inflated. Plus and the pillow, and that helps. All right. I'm going to get my head down. In the morning, we'll see how all of this gear is fed, and then we'll put our tent wish list together. morning 10 to 6 oh god i'd be fast asleep then not a bad kip at all <laughs> oh my god i wouldn't be There's getting no up after six on the inner which is good i think you'll wake up about eight the two longer struts at the end of the tent mean you've got plenty of space at the ends as well so you've not got the material bashing in your face i took this out <laughs> it was like trying to sleep on a waterbed. Got my little mesh bag with my hat and stuff in. That just propped me up a little bit. <clears throat> Very comfy. Toasty warm in the pipe dream. You might be able to see. I had everything really well ventilated last night. Let's have a look. Good airflow through there, look. Closed that side up this morning. So I opened up the sleeping bag, used it as a quilt. Old habits die hard, don't they? The Whisper pad, though, very good. Much quieter than my Thermarest. And I'm going to push the boat out and say it's more comfortable than my Thermarest as well. Although it isn't as warm. Um, it was about seven degrees, I think, last night. That was on the forecast anyway. Uh, it wasn't cold or anything, but it's one of them. The thermo rest, the external, you just feel the heat radiating back here. You don't with this, but it's 150 pound cheaper. So you decide. Makes a nice change having plenty of room to get dressed as well. Yeah, I mean, that looks very, uh, very roomy in there. That does look a nice bit of space. So there was a bit of condensation on the fly. I'm going to add that to my tent wish list. Although physics doesn't really allow for it, does it? You're going to get it on tents no matter what. 
it's colder outside than it is in the tent and you've got a little bit of moisture in the air, you're going to get it. That's what cloths are for, though, isn't it? I must admit, I never worry about I never have a cloth for wiping it. I just, it's never really that much of a problem. Well, that's not too bad. Looks like it's been raining. We did get forecast a little bit. So there's two decent sized pockets in this tent. Um, got plenty of stuff in there. There's one at this end of the tent. And there's one at the back there. Anyone else there's use no pockets, pockets on this side? I've never used quite a like pocket. A few more pockets in tents. Give you more storage options. And I quite like these ones where you get a little storage at the top as well. Sometimes just putting your headlamp in there acts as a lantern for the tent. These little loops, although they do a job, sometimes it's fiddly when your hands are cold. So the next thing that I'm going to add to my wish list is a couple more pockets. Now, this is just going to be my wish list, by the way. Um, okay. Everybody's we're different. They've all got different we're needs waiting. and preferences. We're waiting for this wish list. So you're not going to have one that... 22 minutes and we're waiting for the wish list. Needs, but it's nice to be able to... Waffles and You don't go camping all the time to have one tent that will do you pretty much all year round. Yeah, in Travistar. most situations. Yeah, anyway. Travistar. <laughs> now, this is a true one-man tent. There's me, plenty of room for my gear inside. Yeah, Travistar. Rucksack outside as yeah, well. Travistar, so, well, that's still inside. Um, vestibule space, so I can cook in there, which yeah. I'm going to get the tent. a brew going this morning. Half the so. Travistar is vestibule. See if we can get a sunrise first. Good ventilation, and there's room yeah. at either end, so you, yeah. For, uh, you've not gives got you loads of ventilation. tent material in your face. <laughs> So I'm crouching a little bit, but I can kneel up as well. So if it's chucking it down in a bit, I'm going to be able to pack my bag whilst being protected from the elements. Depends how high you pitch the trail start. You can't do that <laughs> maybe in you can, maybe you can. tiny bivvy style <laughs> tents that I like to use. Bit of rain still on the tent. <laughs> That's going to be added to my wish list as well. The all tents come out of the factory waterproof so it doesn't affect this particular one but some tents you've got to seam seal them yourself oh dear <laughs> um so all of these edges you'd have to go around with some kind of silicon yeah, i get why they do it them. to keep the costs down because to seam seal a tent you've got to pitch them you've got to add the sealant and then let it dry and that's a really expensive part of the process and these lightweight shelters you want to get them as cheap as possible Look at those colours. Yeah, it does look I'm pretty. running before the clag gets in the way. Beautiful. It's one advantage if you're getting up early, Paul. I'm too bloody tired and sleepy and lazy. I'm still asleep. But by getting up, you do, you do get some nice weather and sunshine. I wonder how close you are to the path there. I wonder where that is. Someone tell me where that is. I'll find it. I'll camp there. I'll camp there one day. It's all right, isn't it? Thank you. A bit windy, mind? Yep. <laughs> We're setting the alarm for. I'm going to bag an Ethel. <laughs> I hope your wife doesn't mind you bagging an Ethel. <laughs> Keep your, keep your hands Back off, off Ethel's tips. <laughs> Another one in the bag. Although I might get blown off here in a minute. You can just see the tent poking out. I 
we're still waiting for these these things for the tent. Come on, twenty five minutes. Come on, I want to know what the what this thing is that you want for the tent. Because so far the trail size ticked all your boxes. Yeah, I want to know what else you want. We're waiting. Got more food. I'm hungry. How much longer have we got? I thought my videos were long enough. <laughs> Ten minutes, twelve minutes. Okay, there's no credits. So Doors open. I've got plenty of ventilation. But if I needed to, you know, there is room to climb inside the tent and put my stove here. You see the trail stove. I've been anywhere sit, near my fly sheet. And you can have your feet inside. You know, to make a brew or cook my dinner inside my tent is something that I want on my wish list, especially if well, I'm trail star, using man. the same tent in all conditions. There you are then, trail star. There are two ways up up here as well, so you can ventilate from the top. You've already seen there's plenty of ventilation at the ends of the tent. And trail star gives you plenty of ventilation. <laughs> Just going back to the waterproofing. Okay, waterproofing. I also think the minimum you really want is 3,000 millimeters. Head. So technically, uh, 1,500 millimeters is class as waterproof but you're getting a a pounding in heavy downpours all the time the greater the number the the better oh, a bit of david bellamy oh that's a nice cup of tea all right yeah you see here when you're sitting in there i don't know if you can see the mouse but when you're sitting in there and you've got your feet out here, your feet are actually sticking outside. Whereas in the trail star, you could sit in the vestibule and you are still inside. And that's that's what I like. You're actually, you know, you it's so bloody big. You're, you're under it the whole time, apart from when you're not under it. Got it all this morning. Even though a rainbow. What's left of it? So the wind picked up a little bit through the night. Still a bit breezy this morning. As with pretty much all tunnel tents that I've used. This did flap a little bit. Wasn't too bad, but I did need to put my earplugs in. That's something that I need link to below. Most my link. Nowadays, though. My link below. Yeah, so we'll add <laughs> quiet materials, non-flappy tents to the wish list, shall we? Probably getting probably a bit greedy just... now, though. So what have we got so far? The biggest thing for me yes. is one man tent can comfortably fit one man and all of his gear yep, trail star. to be able to sit up yep. and be plenty long enough for, for people of all shapes and sizes. I get that they struggle to cater for you if you're seven foot tall, but, but most one man tents, you struggle to fit somebody in over six foot. We want it to be fully waterproof. Yeah. Trail star. Pretty storm resistant. Definitely trail star. So waterproof star. seams and plenty of going out points. Room at either end of the tent as well. So you've not got your tent material in your face. A decent sized vestibule for storing your gear and doing a little bit of cooking in if need be. Yeah, trail star. So good ventilation. And if you put your head by the door, then you've got plenty of headroom. On this tent, we'd like it to be condensation proof. Unlikely, but that's what we really want. We want the tent to be as light as possible. However, sometimes I think for an extra 100, 200 grams, I'd rather carry that and have the additional space. Decent sized entrance. Plenty. Pitch the trail star a bit higher off the ground, but a gap all the way around that will help with ventilation. And then for your storm let's pitch it a bit lower yeah your pockets give me more pockets a decent height bathtub floor we don't want water getting in the bottom of a tent oh i'd like the inner and outer to be connected so it doesn't have that on this tent you've got to just put two bungees around one tent peg yeah um, i much prefer the little that. clips where the inner and outer are together <laughs> can't get everything but I'm guessing they've done that to save a little bit of weight. Well, it's going on my wish list. So I don't want the inner to be too saggy. So some towing over tents in the past have been really saggy. This one's quite tall. Not a big deal, but I think it just looks better and gives you the maximum amount of space. So the AS stands for all season. 
like to be able to use a tent in all seasons. It's nice to have the solid inner for the colder months and then be able to unzip it a little bit to give you some mesh for the warmer months. Although you can get away with just a full mesh inner all year round. Just another nice to have. I've seen the trails Go on, then we'll add temp the pegs for the list. I use that's an Eastern Backpacker nine inch and their Eastern Nano six inch. The temp pegs that come with a lot of tents, even some premium ones, I think are pretty rubbish. The ones that come with this are the Terra Firma. They're not too bad, but I still don't really get on with them too well. They're quite sharp, and I find that these Eastern pegs, they work in almost all conditions, barring snow where you have to tweak them a little bit, unless you can get it into the ground. Yep, give me some decent temp pegs. What else? Poles. I like the fact that um, Hilleberg, they give you a spare little pole section. It'd be nice if all manufacturers did that. I know it will add to the cost. I'm not too fussed about the tent being fully freestanding because that does require that you have you know, additional poles and it makes the whole thing heavier. Although it does give you better pitching options. But I definitely want poles that are going to be able to stand a little bit of flex and wind force. So while I'm pushing the boat out, I'm going to choose a premium material as well. Something that is really strong and got high tear resistance. Not all ripstop nylon is equal. Some of the really cheap ones, they tear almost as easy as paper. You try tearing Hilleberg material with your bare hands. You need to be Jeff Capes. Got as well? Yeah, to be fair, right? <laughs> I did wreck a trail star, but then that was in pretty horrendous conditions. It's on video somewhere on my channel a few months ago. Uh, trail star material is very, very strong. I certainly agree. Hilleberg is incredibly strong too, obviously. But yeah, trail star ticks that box too. I hate those really thick, cheap ones that, that fray quite a lot. And the, the line locks. Um, I do like this sort of line lock. You get some that are just like a little plastic thing with three holes in. <laughs> They're horrible. Cheap and nasty. It wouldn't cost much more to put these sort of things on everything. Zips. Want a zip that you can do with one hand. And it to be fairly easy to do in cold weather. Again, personal preference. I would like to have a double skin tent yeah the emoti inners a have bit more those bits of yellow condensation these little eyelets that your poles fit into i actually prefer a reinforced sleeve the sleeve's much easier to get poles in and out of again especially when you've got cold hands the tarp tent scarp one that's also quite a big tent for one person and they've got like a little adjuster on here so you can slide your inner in a little bit if you want to have a larger vestibule while you cook and then you just slide it back again when you've done that'd be a nice little feature to have it gives you a few more options if you could have some sort of rig in there where you can lift that bit up to give you a bit more ventilation when the weather's really nice um i think the scarp again has got something like that yep. yeah yeah I my mean, scarp had some great features i just thought that it was let down by some of the finish of it and tiny little pockets that your poles had to fit into and the, the way the crossing poles fit just wasn't what I wanted. It's been a cracking little camp and I do love this tent. I'm going to stick my neck out and say it's the best one person tent that I've come across. Uh, I think the Scarp one is a very, very good, a very good tent personally. Uh, the one yeah I, yeah I, I know the sleeve can be mine's mine is tight and it's i don't know if i think mine shrunk to be fair i don't know how or why um yeah right. yeah i think scott wants a good tent personally across this year i'm basing that on all season uk use it's not perfect like i would like those to be connected but it's not a big deal it's really easy to do still the rest of the tents connected up together. 
but the space inside will fit almost everybody. It is a palace in there. This is the kind of tent you want in those cold winter months when you're spending 12, 14 hours stuck in a tent. So I don't reckon that's a bad little wish list. However, I want all of those things for cheaper, for less money. So this is one of Terra Nova's how much more premium it? tents. And they do make cheaper versions under the Wild Country brand, where the materials maybe aren't quite as advanced. But I like to see most of those features available on tents at different budgets, even if that means slightly less technical materials. Not everyone's got this kind of money to drop on a tent. And I think a few cheaper priced options would make the hobby more accessible to more people. Right. Waste time wiping that tent down, isn't it? Raining. I'm going to get in here Damn. and pack this stuff away. Waterproof socks. These are a game changer. Yeah, with the trail star, you do have to <laughs> some crawl in and out of it. That's the only thing. But if Chris Tang Zang can do it at 73 years old, <laughs> I think that's only one job can, left. That's young ones. Drop the tent. So, what do you think of my wish list for the, we'll call it the ultimate one man tent for UK wild camping? Is there anything that you think I've missed or anything that you'd like to see? Mm. Me personally, I think the laser compact all season ticks a lot of boxes, but everything can always be a little bit better. Anyway, I will leave links in the description below to everything that I've used today, including the tent. I've also got a few discount codes for you as well, which might save you a few quid. Did forget to mention on my list, needs to be easy to pitch and this is pretty easy to pitch one pole in the middle two at either end and then just stake it out yeah trust and even packing away in the wind pitch. it's pretty easy just leave some of the guy lines in so it's not going to blow anywhere don't get the, the cube and trail dry star if you underneath want underneath where <laughs> i pitched winner i don't think i mentioned it pack size the tent needs to be able to pack down really small for me. I want it to be able to go in my backpack that way. I don't like these ones that are, are really long. That's why I'm struggling a bit with the, the DCF tent. It's more of a ball ache to get it in your pack. Where was this? I just shove it in. I tend to always like to put my shelters in that front, not this side pocket here, but in the front pocket. I virtually never put a tent inside the main compartment i like to have a nice pocket in the front and whack it in there and then if it's raining or miserable you can just take your tent out and you don't even have to open your pack get your tent up get inside and then you can open your pack under cover no bother at all i don't expect it but be nice to see one or two manufacturers jump in the comments to hear their thoughts on why they design tents a certain way. I get that they design different tents for different situations, whether that be lightweight backpacking or winter heavy snow camping. But I reckon most people just want one tent that will do most situations. And there's some that are pretty good and will do that, but they could always be better. Anyway, Andy's just got to drop his cricket and then we're getting off the hill. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Yeah. Interesting, interesting little, um, interesting video there. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I'm like brave enough to, <laughs> to check this out, upload it or what. I don't know. We will, we will have to see.